Okay, uh, my name's Lee Sky. I've been in the club since like 22 years now. Terry's been in it longer. And today I'm going to be demonstrating a mystery salt shaker with this book Jim brought in. It's called an upside down salt shaker. And the manufacturer of this goes way back. I heard even in the Egyptian tombs they found them made out of clay. And uh, the outer shape can be any shape you want for a capable of doing. It can be a square block or a fancy turning. It consists of two parts. You have the main body which is hollowed up in. The top needs to be rounded over in there, which you can round it over, or if you have a large drill bit with the, the regular kind of drill bits, you can just drill it with that, and that point can be the top surface rounded. It can't be flat in there. You just can't go with the Forstner bit, or it doesn't work as well. And if you round over the top. I have a sample that's cut in half so you can see that. We'll be passing around. Hey guys. Hey guys. Sit down. Sit down. All right, we got a demonstration going here. Sit down. And the other part is a funnel. It has an eighth inch hole drilled through it. And the height of the funnel is half the depth of your hole. So this hole is three and a half inches on this one which will come apart and the funnel is one and three quarter inches which is half the height so I like to make them so you snap in the base and it doesn't come out very easy you can take an air compressor and put it on the hole give it up and it'll just pop out or I have an ice pick and you can kind of work it and it'll come out that way. But it needs to be in there firm enough. To fill it, you just take your salt and you start pouring it in the funnel. See it's running down inside there. You just shake it till the salt goes down. Keep refilling it until it no more goes down. And then the first time or two, when it quits going down, the, the first time you turn it over, you'll spill out the excess. And after that, you can turn it like this and nothing comes out until you give it a shake like that and then the salt comes out. So what happens is, let me split this one in half. Your material, the salt, collects all the way around in the bottom. And we have our rounded top on that camera or this other one? Right now it's on this one. Okay. Actually both. And with the rounded top, all the salt all the way around, when you give it a shake, goes up, goes right to the center and the top and crashes into itself and drops straight down through that foam. So you just give it a shake like that. But like once you got it full, so you can do that and nothing comes out, and there's your salt. And you don't want really too big of a hole here, otherwise a whole lot will come out. It's better to have this eighth inch hole where you got to shake it two, three, four times or once and you don't want that much salt, you know, it can ruin your meal. So we'll, we'll pass this around. And this funnel is just stuck in there. I made it fit. Right, the bottom you want to concave just slightly, so it's pretty simple to make. I don't think we need both halves for this. Who wants to start passing? <clears throat> well, I drilled it in with this 7 8 bit. I have a big 1 inch one and a 1 and an 8 I couldn't find. Otherwise, I would go in and do that. And I also like to, unless the size is smaller, round this out, hollow it out a little more down here. That way you can put more material in, you don't have to fill it as much. So you can see it's just a straight hole. You have a, a little lip here, which that base pops into. 
and then uh, it, it, the, your funnel again comes halfway up your total depth, and that's what you do. So here's the one that I popped in there. You can give it a small shake and throw the salt over your shoulder if you're superstitious that way. And here's another one that's been hollowed out. You can literally just take some Forstner bits and take one and drill the outer bigger rim hole and then you can take a little smaller one and drill all the way down to the bottom and then go in with a round nose scraper and round over the top of the hole. That's one way, you know, I, I like drilling in with this drill bit after I do the Forstner and it kind of hollows it out and I just blend the edges together. What you don't want is your hole coming up and then a step over because the salt will hit that and it'll, it'll still come out but not as much. So it has to be rounded in the bottom? Well, up in the top of your shaker, it needs to be rounded or peaked to peaked a point. Up. Okay. Rounded over works. It, it just, when you shake it, it, it all goes up, crashes into itself, drops straight down through that yeah, hole. It wants to drop through the yeah. center. And uh, this friends I know, I was at a party at their house, and I, was, I had one, and I was showing it to them. And he goes, oh, wait. And he went to his cupboard, and he pulls out two little ceramic ones, which were like an inch and a half square out of ceramic. The same exact thing. Somebody mm -hmm. made it out of ceramic, he poured the salt in, shook it. First time you dump it, some comes out. He had a salt and pepper. He put ground pepper in it too, or ground, <coughs> or whatever. And Did you glue your funnel in? I didn't. The one he brought, he glued it in. If you don't make it so it sticks in there, you, you don't want somebody shaking it right, and the whole, the whole thing, thing come out. out. If it's too loose, just glue it, loose, just glue it in. And you can put some rice in there if you're concerned about the humidity taking the salt up. I mean, people have done that. So I decided on this piece of box elder since it's a soft maple, and I know this lathe won't, drilling will not go too fast. But the top will only be about that tall, and the funnel I'm going to make out of this piece. That way, the grain will kind of match up when you pop it in. And it doesn't have to match. You can use two different kinds of woods. Now, I was going to do it up higher, but there's a big knot right here, and that goes, and it's over here on this other side. And when we do that skinny funnel, you don't want a side grain knot in there. It's not going to hold together. It'll break off. So the funnel is probably going to be from here down to here, and the, the top part will be there, and this piece will just be gone. And if you're going to make yourself one, find an exciting piece of wood. This is a piece of curly java plum, and I sprayed some finish on there just so the curl, you just give it a rock and it should toy in some here. It's just it's a curly java what? Java plum. 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 It's, it's a big tree. Yes. yes. Can you explain why what you said about having the knot on the side, what would break off and why? Well, if this funnel's kind of thin, because I, I make it thin, in, in the book here, we can pass that around too. Please don't take a time and look at all the pages. Just look at that, and maybe Jim will run it to you later. They, they make a little chunkier funnel here, and I refine it because I want to put as much salt or pepper in there as I can. That, uh, and don't crease the book way back. This is Jim's book. Uh, and if you had a knot going right through here, this thing's going to break because it's side grain going across this little spot. So it's not the outside that's going to break. It's like you're the knot yeah. in the funnel, the funnel. It, if I made this funnel up like that, see that knot would be right here at the top. Okay. And that would break off and go shorter. So you need to examine your piece of wood compared to uh, what you're making. And I already rounded the piece off. I have a tenon on both the ends. So the procedure I like to do is I'll part this off, hollow out the inside, do my steps where that funnel is going to snap into, and 
get the inside hollow. That way I know how deep it is. So I know how long to make the funnel. Lee, you said the funnel has to be halfway in, right? The, the funnel is half the distance you hollowed up inside there. If it was four inches deep, you'd make the funnel two inches. Because if you, if you make the funnel too tall, it can only hold so much, but if you make it too short, it still will hold less. If you get it exactly half, it'll hold the most material, so you don't have to fill it as much. I mean, you can make these as big as you want. I've made a couple about like that tall. They were a Darth Vader looking one. And uh, you give it a few shakes, and the salty taste and white stuff comes out the bottom. Okay. Yeah. You can actually custom make them to decide how much salt you want coming out. Yeah, yeah. You can make them bigger and fatter. My buddy Glenn made some, and he made them like a round sphere with just the, the bottom flat come out. So you pick it up, and it was, it was that big around and like that tall. All right, first I'm just going to go ahead and part this off <coughs> somewhere right in here. Because the chuck side will be the top of my shaker and this will be the bottom. It's in there, and I'm just going to part it off, finish that, do the drill. And I've been teaching for over 20 years, 21 years, and a lot of times I see people with the parting tool pointing at straight center. You need to lower your handle, you have a bevel here, and get it up. It cuts a whole lot better with the point up than it does going straight at the center. Sounds better, cuts better. And when you're parting off, okay. yes, we should have the center on here for support, but you don't never want to cut this off completely with this center on here. Because that wood is going to pinch sideways, it can grab your tool. And uh, Ray Ryland had one once an older club member, and uh, he took it out of his hand and stuck it in the wall of his garage. <laughs> See, I'm down to about as thick as a pencil now. I'm going to back this off, and this is soft wood, so I can probably just grab it and break it off. Now, knowing this is soft maple, the parting tool tears the grain up. So this would not be good to do my final cuts with. So if you pick up my spindle gouge, which has disappeared, I used it and I left it on the rack. So we'll use something else, like a bowl gouge. Are we still doing gizmos and gadgets now and then? Mm -hmm. Bud? You what? Are we still doing gizmos and gadgets at the meeting? Yes. Okay. If anybody has them, we have a slot. I have one right here. Attended. This is the cast iron tool rest that almost every lathe comes with. I ground a little shallow groove down here. Put my die grinder with a quarter inch metal bit on there and ran it out across, made a groove, and I glued on an already hardened steel with JD Well. I've done that to every one of these I got, even my little Carbotech ones this long. This is so far superior than just the cast iron ones. The only problem I had, I dropped the big 14 inch one and it landed just like that and it popped about that much. Now the next size smaller, you seeing this from the side here? No, that's from the top. The next size smaller, I want to drill in, it's going to leave a little lip 
that my funnel will stop when I pop it in. So I think I'm going to go even one smaller than this one. Because we can always adjust the size using a turning tool. I'd like to make a motion. We got a new life. Detectors. Don't do that. We, it was a brand we don't want that to happen on the first uh, meeting. <laughs> <laughs> it was a brand new lay, too. It wasn't a shitty lay? No. A non shitty lay. Do you usually wax your drill bits and stuff from your guys? Uh, I have in the past, but I, I usually don't. Okay, I don't have the tool. So if I get our larger hole started, we can kick it down to a smaller bit and then get a deeper hole. So I want to go down about here. I can just do a little pencil mark on the flute. That drill must have been pretty dull. Yeah. Yeah, that is. That drill yeah, was pretty dull. Lee, this is the cone that you're doing, right? The cone? No, this yeah, is the this top. Is the yeah. The cone is the other piece of wood. Oh. We do the inside of the top first. Oh, okay. So and then you do the outside yeah. later. I know Sean, eh? Yeah. yeah. See, and the quill on this isn't that long. Now, if it is a soft wood, as long as you're holding this good, you can push it in. Pull it out. Okay, almost up to our pencil mark. And whenever you're drilling, if you hold this when you're retracting it and pull and have a good grip on it, this won't come loose out of here and start spinning. If it ever starts spinning, crank it back in and it will relock itself then. And then uh, get hold of it. If you hold this down low and not up here, because this tips it and kind of locks it. If you grab it low, it slides better. It was a good machine. You don't give up, do you? We already voted. I don't. In 2018, when this machine was brand new, it just came out, I was at uh, Wood Turners Without Borders with the AEW over in Puerto Rico. We were doing a thing at the biggest craft fair that the country has, and uh, we had 14 students in our class. During this convention, we had this big plexi wall thing about as big as this room. They sent us 10 of these, and 
Two of them broke before we even turned them on. That was the tail stocks. We got one of them working, but. All right, I'm just gonna go ahead and hollow this with the tool. Now I made a long tenon in here, just so it would, uh, Hold quite well. <laughs> All right, I'm going to check my depth. Put my thumbnail. I'm looking at this side and this side. A little shallow, but I still need to round over the top of that hole. Now, I like to start hollowing with a square nose scraper. You can use a round scraper, but the, the square nose. There's a slight angle cantering down this way on it, way up above. Yeah. Mm. So it's not 90 degrees from the cutting edge on the end to the side. It's a little less. Than move it, move it to your your right, if you would. This way. No, to your right. So that is can, my right. Yeah. yeah, that way. Okay. So they can see that. Yeah, there is a slight canter on there, and when you're using a scraper whether it's one of them fancy carbide ones or whatever, your own, or a scraping cut with a gouge, whatever, you're only using about an eighth inch of the blade at any one time. Quarter inch max. You get more than a quarter inch of that blade cutting in scraping mode. It starts digging in and jumping and grabbing. And I know if you've turned, you've experienced that. On a gouge, yeah, you're doing a good bevel cut on a nice soft wet piece of wood. You can do a three quarter inch wide shaving if you're doing a bevel cut. But scraping cuts don't work like that. So I'm going to be putting the tool on the edge of my hole. And even though this is a little more than a quarter wide, I cut off part of the blade. There's only a quarter inch of cutting edge on the end. So I cannot cut more than a quarter inch with this. Otherwise, it grabs and digs in. So, I'm just going to put it on the center of that small hole and then just push straight in. And it takes it out. I'll only be cutting about an eighth inch or less on this left side of the blade. If I go in with a round one, that puts a little more pressure sideways. This is putting pressure straight down the center of the lid. And scrapers work better with the lathe going fast. Also want to retighten the chuck before we start doing that kind of work. And when you line up your scraper, the cutting edge should be right on dead center with the tool level, like the bed of the lathe, on the inside, or slightly above. On the outside, the cutting edge and the top surface should be pointing at dead center or slightly below. That way, where you touch the wood, you're less than 90 degrees, just slightly. You will not get catches and diggings. If you're over 90 degrees, catches and diggings occur on scraping cuts.
Uh, it's just straight. Up and down? Oh, this way? Yeah, it's 83 degrees or something. If you have it out about 60, the edge doesn't last as long. It's really aggressive and grabby. It, all, every one of my scrapers is about that same 83 degrees or something. It's 90. Lot, I see them where they're really sharp. and It wears your tool off. Okay, so right now I have pretty much a straight up and this angles in a little bit and it comes over and down to that center hole. Can you see that on the camera? Mm -hmm. So now I want to go in with the round scraper and widen this out just a little and then blend this down so I have a rounded top up in there. Now the fibers are this way so in this area here my best cut is from the center towards the rim along that edge. But just with side grain, it's the opposite. It'd be from here down. Since the fibers go this way, I want to cut from center up to the rim. Over here, if I'm hollowing it inside, I'd be cutting down, down on the inside. So you need to follow the grain. Once you learn that and you're not getting catches and picking chunks out and shooting your faces across the room, and things go a lot better for you. Now I have to be over here like this for that, and I like my arm there. If we had a set screw locking this down, I could put the lathe in reverse and come over here. Now I can see everything really good but there's a chance the vibrations will cause that chuck to come unscrewed. slightly and drilled it out and made one out of a stick. <laughs> that would look cool sitting on the counter, wouldn't it? Yeah. yeah. I'm going to have to try one of those. Okay, I'm just feeling inside here. Got a nice hole. The top is nice and rounded. There's just a little tiny bump in the center. When you get that bump out, you line your tool up with the exact center here and you go in with the handle up. Lower down, go left and right, up and down, left and right. Very lightly, you get that little bump out. David Ellsworth explained that and showed it at one demo. And, uh, mm -hmm. Can you do that with a round scraper? Round nose scraper, yes. So that should be gone. Yeah, that's totally gone. See, at this time, my bottom surface is done. My little ridge that the funnel will pop into is done, and the whole inside is done, except for sanding. You should go in and sand it a little. And if it's too far in there, take a dowel around, <coughs> cut it down this way, and you can slide the sandpaper in and roll it up and stick that in. Because you don't want to be sticking your fingers in trying to sand like that with the legs running. So you should get this all cleaned up so there's really no fibers that the uh, salt can knock loose unless you're looking for extra fiber in your diet. Just about 15 minutes. Okay. And then check to see if the bottom was flat.
Okay, so the inside's done. Now I'm not going to finish the whole outside because that's whatever shape you make. I mean, it could stay just like this with the tenon on top. Okay, now I, I made a tenon here. So if I fit this in that way, the green will be off just because it was that far down. So that doesn't really matter, it's on the bottom. So you can do it on either side, but we have that knot we need to remove. repeated 20 times or 20 years of experience. All right, now I want to drill the eighth inch hole. And if you're making these taller, you need to get an extra long eighth inch drill. <coughs> because the eighth inch drills come and they're only that big. And even with this piece, it'd be stretching it, but we'll make it work. <coughs> these longer ones, they sell them at Home Depot, not quite this long. And start it with the smaller drill bit or a <coughs> spotting or centering drill bit off a metal lathe. You put that in there, these things don't move. The flute is only, I don't know, five <coughs> inches, three quarter inch long, and these are really solid. They'll give you a starting pilot hole, which is true. And then you can switch over to the drill bits with the flute all the way down, which tend to, uh, if you try drilling that starting with this big long one, it would just go off sideways. Now the hole usually drills off sideways anyway a little bit. That's why we drill the hole. And then recenter it on that hole, and then cut your funnel from that. Otherwise, the tip of your funnel will be off center. And that way, when you make that funnel up, you're going to have this hole off sideways. Just keep short. Now I have pulled of this and I'm pulling back when I pull it back. And you don't want to ever do that and then just pull it out. Because this thing can come out and really pose a problem. I know if I pull this all the way out to the end, it should go completely through this. to the center with the point in it. <coughs> and that one seemed to drill pretty straight, so I'm just going to go ahead and put a tenon on here.
rid of those two sharp corners. See, and this end did come off. That one is pretty much dead center. That's where I started. So that's off a little bit on that side. That's why I put a ten in here and I'm turning it around. This end is dead center. This end is not. So if I put it in the chuck lightly, heavier than that. So. Put this right in that hole and adjust it over. That way that hole should be pretty much dead center right through there. Now I can go ahead and make my funnel. First I want to turn the tenon that snaps in here and then angle the funnel down there and just cut it off on the lathe. So we have our calipers. Cut my size. Open it up just slightly. I'll true it up again. Is that because of the center hole? Yeah, that center hole on this end was off center. If you don't do that and just when you make your funnel, you have to make the funnel in fatter, then you can take a little grinding burr and kind of open it up a little. That might not be a bad idea anyway, though, would it? On the receiving end, up the part of the funnel. Well, I, I do it every time, usually. Take more coming out. Yeah, it'll, it'll open it up so it'll catch more. Okay, now I want to make this size fit inside here. Almost. Give it a sharp edge. See, a little too loose. That's why I only get a small portion of it. That's the apprentice. Is that a, the brand? Did you get it, you get it at Penn State? Penn Craft State. Supply. Craft Supply or Penn State, they both have. Well, one of them, Penn State, I think, is a Barracuda. Oh, no, you don't want that. That's no, I, I have one of those, and the, the T ranch is all stripped off already. And so, Craft Supply has one. Yeah, this, the apprentice chuck. This, this is the mini chuck. It's about $160. It comes threaded for this lathe, the one by eight, and you get four different sets of jaws. Okay, now that's a good fit there. Now that needs to be straight. Yeah, I have two of these chucks, and uh, I like them a lot. Something moved on me. Trying to get the fit right here, right now. And that's a little loose. Now it's going to be perfect. Okay, we're going to go with that. Okay, now this end. The underside of the funnel, we need to cone that in a little bit. That way when you pour it and... 
Uh, you can use a gouge, you can use a round nose scraper. We'll start with that, but I know this is soft wood, so it's going to tear the wood up. It doesn't have to be too deep, does it? No, it doesn't have to be very deep. <coughs> Just need kind of a cup there to catch the material. Now that's going to be well, it's smoother than I thought it would be. But uh, this is a tool I invented. It is a uh, drill bit where I altered the edge. I brought one to pass around, but it should be right here. I cut the end of a drill bit <coughs> like a gouge, but it's at an angle, so I can come and start, it's for ingrain hollowing, and come back up here. If you do it right, this is like 400 bit sandpaper. The tool rest needs to be lower because I need to angle it up. Once that's in the way, I'll raise it just slightly. I need about Five more minutes. You're running tight, so okay. we got to be out of here by quarter after or quarter till. So it's just doing a double rubbing job <coughs> out this way. I'll just open the hole up. Okay, so that's done. This is done. Now I need to remove this material, make my funnel. Got my bowl gouge. All this needs to go away. Now right under the lip, see I have about an eighth inch here, so I need to cut in just enough so it fits on the inner hole. That should do it. Now I just go for the funnel. You can do an urn in an hour. Oh, I have. <coughs> now, usually I would have the tailstock on here sticking in that hole. So. Go ahead and cut it off. Uh, let's just use the part of the Yes. So I measured up about right there is half. Just go ahead and cut this off all the way. And you leave the inside unfinished, right? Just I usually sand it, but I, I well, don't put finish so on it. And you need to start with dry wood. Okay. 
Now I have a little uh, flared out pointed bit on here. I just want to go and lightly clean this up on this side. If you make that thicker, you can open it up a little bit. Or I put a bit like this on the Dremel and just go in and I'll clean up these edges. So, because there's some flaky stuff here. Then that, just <coughs> like this. This one's too loose. Monitor. It's that way though. But that's still a little loose. This one you'd want to glue in. But that's basically it. And after this point, I have. Another one of these chucks with the small jaws, I put this on, stick it in here and open it up. I'm not concerned about marks from the chuck in here. Nobody's ever really going to see it. And go ahead and finish the whole outside to whatever shape it is. So. You, said, you said glue it in. If you glue it in, then how do you put the salt in it? Through the funnel. You just pour the salt right there. Oh. You missed the first part. Yeah, you just pour it like that, and see, it just goes right down. You just can't put rice in it after that. Yeah, you can. One, one grain at a time. <laughs> and then, see? It even works. There you go. All right. Thank you.